All right, what's going on, guys and gals? And happy Fourth of July! Uh, at least it'll be the fourth whenever I drop this video here, as you're watching it right now. But anyhow, I'm going to give you an update on my '96 Mazda B3000 pickup truck. So, do it once around. It, pretty much four years of ownership, almost, and almost 40,000 miles, and still looks pretty good. Served quite well so far, so I can't really complain. But, of course, owning a nearly 20-year-old truck, you know, comes with its parts and its maintenance. So, I've had a couple of hefty repairs on it. But, I mean, here, I'll show you one thing here that happened. Yeah, I ran over a tree branch, or like a small log with my front tire. And I'm pretty sure what happened is the log kicked up and bloom. So yeah, you'll see it here in the dash cam video. What in the hell? Yeah, you know, at first I was pissed off about it and it was like, eh, older truck. If it was a newer one, I'd have been pissed off, but yeah, that happens. But yeah, a few little updates here. And I guess, as you saw in yesterday's video, Headlight switch and dimmer switch both replaced and also the odometer gear replaced So that was about a $250 fix in parts basically. I did that labor myself of course The stereo install still works great and It's about due for new tires I mean, they have a little bit left, but I don't know. They might not pass inspection this year, so I'm going for something more aggressive. And I'll show you what I'm going to be doing back here as I walk back to the shed. Whenever I bought the truck off the last owner, it came with the stock wheels and the, the wheels that are on it now from a Mountaineer. So basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going I'm to, I'm doing a little bit something different here. I'm going to paint these wheels white, paint it the same color as a truck, and I went to the junkyard yesterday and I got, I picked up these four center caps for 20 bucks. So, yeah, these gray, these three gray ones actually came off another B3000, a 94 model, and he took a hell of a hit from the front and driver side, and I'm guessing that's why the, uh, the fourth cap was destroyed because there was a log hub laying in that cab that was all smashed up. So I'm guessing the center cap was gone. The white one, however, it was chrome and it came from a 93 or a 94 Ranger. So what I did is I peeled all the chrome off and then I took and sanded them all down. See, these two are the rear ones. They say Mazda on them. So I got them all taped off and ready to go. So I'm going to hit them with primer and I'm going to paint them black. So basically I'm going to have white rims, black center caps. So there ain't going to be much chrome at all in this truck when I'm done. Kind of giving it that, oh, what do you call it? That obscure look, I guess. The subtle look. Of course, you know, this right along the side here, that was here when I got the truck. I paid three grand outright for it. And it only, it had 97,000 when I brought it home that day. Now it's up to 134, so yeah, almost 40,000 miles since I've been driving it. And daily driving it at that. You see crank windows, powerless locks, less shit to break. Oh, and your lock halves. That's the way to go, buddy. So we'll take a look under the hood. Yeah, I know we were already under here yesterday. So there's the 3.0. And yeah, here it is. Yeah, my cousin redid the heads on this. So that's why it has new head gaskets at 121,000. And what was happening there, it started probably a couple years ago. The water pump, or what was going on is I was having no heat in the truck, but then the truck itself would start overheating. And this would only happen when I'm on the highway, but if I'm in stop and go traffic or just driving down back roads, I mean, yeah, the gauge would walk a little bit, but it was fine. But as soon as I got on the highway, sucker would overheat. 
So here I go to find out the water pump was rusted. I'll, I'll insert a picture of that into this video. So yeah, I went ahead and replaced that. I had the whole front of the motor tore off. So while I was in there, new radiator, new clutch fan, or new fan clutch rather, and of course new water pump. So I did all that. And then what had ended up happening, the truck started overheating again. And this was maybe two or three months later. I'm like, what the hell? What the shit's going on here? Well, as it turned out, I guess from it overheating the first time, it did damage to the one head, and cylinder six had a burnt valve. And it caused the head to crack. So basically what ended up happening, I took it over to my cousin's, my cousin's shop, and yeah, he caught me a break on this. For under a thousand dollars, he basically put rebuilt heads on this, head gaskets, that whole deal. Of course, intake gasket. And basically the heads are from a Ford Windstar that had a 3.0 in it. So, yeah, this thing's part Windstar now. Uh, let's see, of course the normal stuff like your oil, your air filter, your oil changes. Oh, the AC don't work. And I'll tell you what happened here. Driving down the road one day, I was in coming home from West Virginia, one of my many trips down there in this truck, and I, it smelled like a burning smell. It almost smelled like a clutch or brakes, but everything else was acting fine. Like, what the hell? But it was like a subtle smell when we go away. Well, here what was going on is anytime I had the defrost on, the AC compressor was locking up, and basically the clutch was, the, this clutch was what, was, uh, what I was smelling. So it was basically locking up, and it fragged this pulley, so I didn't, this is still the bad compressor, I didn't pull it or nothing, so the AC, I got it unplugged and the AC's still not working, but what I did is I took and put the, uh, the old pulley from my old truck, from the pod, parts bin on it, and just, basically it's just running as a dummy right now, and the power steering, power steering pump, that got replaced at some point. And the other major thing I had happen was this wheel bearing over here. Once again, another one of my main, many trips down there, I kind of noticed that it was making like an odd noise as I was driving down the road, but it didn't seem to handle funny or anything. So, I get down there and, yeah, the whole weekend it was making that noise, but just it, it wasn't handling funny. So, I wasn't sure. I even felt the hub and everything. So, coming back, still making the noise, but not handling funny, I get to Winchester. I mean, keep in mind, half the drive down to her old place, half of it's not highway, so. Okay, so I get to Virginia to get on 81, made our sheet stop, and I felt the hub. You know, like, I felt the hub. Didn't feel hot, so I thought, all right, well, I guess we're good to go. So, we made it on home, no noise or nothing, truck was handling them fine, I get it home, and it was hot to the touch, I mean, it was fucking cooking, I mean, not to the point that it was, it would melt anything, but I mean, it was hotter than it should have been, I know that much, so, here's a little video of when I pulled the wheel and discovered this. Yeah, so I took that to my cousin and he redid that. So that was the two major issues I've had with this over the past four years. But, I mean, aside from all that, it's been good to me. So I'll keep daily driving it till it dies, I guess. No point in a new one, especially I got a mortgage and, what, 
just shy of 10 years to pay on it yet, so I hope this lasts that long, but we'll see. But, yeah, I'm going to put a link to the original review of this truck down below. And, yeah, we'll see you later, and hope you guys have a good 4th of July. And stay safe out there, people.